Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the RoboFlow. So this is actually like a really nice uh, tool for like doing deep learning, machine learning, AI, and so on. So I've been creating some different kind of like projects here on RoboFlow that I also showed you in some videos. So we've been both using like, for example, um, the mock detector here. So we just had a really small data set with only like 70 images. And then we created this mock detector here. I also showed you how we can deploy that model live in OpenCV, for example. So we went into uh, RoboFlow here, we labeled our data set, then we did our model training in um, in Colab, so how we can actually import our custom data set and train uh, a YOLO v5 model on that, and how we can actually like, deploy it as well. So in this video here, I'm going to talk about RoboFlow, we're going over the different kind of like tools that they have, because this is a really, really cool tool that I'm going to show you um, throughout a couple of videos in a series. So basically you have different kind of projects. So I have all my projects here in my workspace and all these projects here is available if you go into my link. I also have an affiliate link to RoboFlow if you want to sign up. Um, you can go down and use my affiliate link down in the description. It will help me out a lot. And you guys can actually see also and also use the capabilities here from RoboFlow uh, when you have signed up. So you can create different kind of project. You can use it for like annotating your data set. You can even like train your models within RoboFlow or you can export it to like, for example, PyTorch, TensorFlow or whatever you want to use. And then you can basically have a custom data set. So the best thing about RoboFlow is that you only need to call a couple of lines of code to actually like import your data set um, into another framework. So often when you're using with your custom data sets, if you've been doing that in deep learning and so on, then you have probably like struggled a lot with loading in your actual like data set from Google Drive or or like from your own local computer and actually like using it in the data loaders for uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow. And that is basically just a pain when you're going to do that and you need to do like a lot of debugging. You really need to know how is your data set, data, data set structured and so on. But this is really cool. We have the different kind of projects. I can just go in and show you some of the projects. They also have a lot of uh, resources down here for how to get started and tutorials. I have videos about it. I'll create a videos about everything here in RoboFlow because this is really nice. We have a lot of capabilities and we can basically do all our machine learning and deep learning within RoboFlow. They also have this universe here that I'm going to show you. So here you can see all the different kind of like projects from the community. We can see like the latest feature projects. We can see like popular um, industries. And then you can basically just go in here and search for open source computer vision projects. If you want to do, for example, like just optic detection, classification, instant segmentation or semantic segmentation, you can just hit this tab here and you will get all the projects created on RoboFlow all the open source created projects here on OpenFlow, and you can even use it for your own. You can take all the data sets, you can take the models, you can do pre-trained, you can do trans learning and all those different kind of things. And then you can basically use it in your own um, application or in your own projects. So here we can basically just go in here and we can do, for example, let's say we want to do semantic segmentation. We can just hit this tab here and then we'll get all the different kind of like projects that is created with um, se semantic segmentation. So this is really cool. It can be used for a lot of different kind of things. You can also go up here and search. We can, for example, want to do, we want to do car detection. We can just hit search here and then it will find all the projects containing something with car detection. So here we have some license plate detection. Um, we can actually just go into that. Let's find a data set here, which is pretty large. So here we have a data set with almost with, with 8,000 images. We can basically just go in here. This is an object detection problem. So we want to detect license plates we can go in and see all the images that they have we can see all the training images test, test images we can even go in here and see the actual like labeling so we can actually go in here and label it um we can see how is the images act like labeled we can go back here again we can see the train set validation set and the test set and we can go down here to the data set and actually like find these uh, download the data set here or we can directly load it into RoboFlow. so you'll first need it in your own in your own um in your own like workspace and then you can upload it later on to for example tensorflow or pytorch we can also see some similar projects down here at the bottom we can also go down here to the model so uh, basically here if 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 someone uh, if someone has actually like, trained a model with roboflow you will also have access to that so basically you can download the data set you can upload the robo you can upload the data set to the roboflow platform and then you can just hit train and then it will train a model on your data set you can export it and deploy it the cool thing about roboflow here is that you're actually able to deploy the models they have examples for both like 
a Py um, Python, you have like Android, iOS, you can even like deploy your models in web browsers and all these different kind of things. And RoboFlow will help you out with deploying your acts like models. It's really easy. It's only a couple lines of code. They have really good APIs. So we're definitely going to use this way, way more in the future. They also have some pretty good documentation where you can actually like see how you can export your data, train your models, how you can do inference on instant segmentation, optic detection, classification, and all these different kind of things. We can also just go in here. We want to do inference with uh, optic detection, for example. We can do it on a Jetson, a Jetson Nano. We can do it on a Raspberry Pi, the OIKD model. We can do it directly in our web browser, mobile, iOS, and all these different kind of things. So we have really nice tutorials for this. So here, let's say you want to in do inference in your web browser. Then you can basically just follow this really nice tutorial. You only have a couple of couple of like code blocks that you need to copy paste into your acts like code. And then it will basically do the predictions for you and do um, all the things here. So this is really crazy, a really cool API that I'm going to use way more in the future. So the documentation here is also pretty good. They have some computer vision data sets and, uh, and also some models that you can directly use. And it will just like direct it here to the universe. So let's now go back to the projects here. So the good thing about like RoboFlow, you can do pretty much everything within deep learning and like computer vision and all these different things within RoboFlow. Let's just go into the logo detector here, which is a neural network that I created as well. And I even trained it here inside of RoboFlow. So I have this data set that I just generated. We have all these annotated images here. So this is basically a public available data set for detecting logos. I divided it into a training set, a validation set here, and then I basically just trained the model. So I just hit start training here, and then you will basically just train a model. It will basically train a model for you, and then you can use it later on. So I basically just hit start training, and now I have the model here. So I didn't have to do anything. I just had to upload my data, data set to RoboFlow. If you have your own data set, you can just upload it, annotate it as I've been doing in other videos. And I'm going to create way more videos in the future, acts like labeling our own custom data set, creating some really nice uh, projects, both with semantic segmentation, instant segmentation, optic detection, and so on. And then we're going to put a lot of effort into acts like deploying these models here, because one thing is to know how we can actually generate our data set and train our model. But the, the next step is acts like how can we go from training our model and then acts like deploying the model? Because if we can deploy a model, we can really do any useful real life things with our uh, AI models and deep learning models. But here we can see the training results that I got. I have uh, a bit above like 40 mean average position. We also have our position here of 76. And then we also get our recall score over here to the right. So these are our training results. We can go in and see a wait, bit, more, bit more details here. If you just open this one up here, uh, we can get a bit more like training defaults. So here we can see the average position by the class. So we can actually like, see what classes is it good to detect. And then we can all just see all these different kind of things. We can also get some visualizations. But one of the nice things after you train your model in RoboFlow is basically that you can deploy the model. You can try this model out by just dropping in an image or browsing your device. You can also go down and see some code examples in many languages of how we can actually like deploy the model as I showed you with the Jetson Nano and all these different kind of things. We can also do use it on our webcam real time in your browser. So a really cool thing. You have just trained your model. Just hit this tab here. It will open up your webcam in the browser and you will do real time inference. I have created videos with how we can use OMSV to do the inference. But here we can just directly test it. You can just deploy your model in the web browser, test it out and this is just mind blowing. I, I can't even imagine like this is a really cool tool that you guys should definitely use for uh, your AI projects. This is really cool. You have really easy access to the data sets. It's easy to annotate. You can just have a custom data set uploaded with a couple of lines. You just need an API key. You can just upload your data set to TensorFlow or Port PyTorch in a couple of lines. Then you can train your model in PyTorch if you don't want to do it here in RoboFlow directly and you want to like fine tune your models a bit more, then you can definitely also do that. You can do really easy inference and deploy your models with different kind of frameworks. So this is really cool. I'm just mind blown. Here we can see some example images of the logo that it has detected. We can also see some different kind of like pre-processing steps down here, augmentations and so on. But right now, let's just try to like drop in an image here and see how this model act like performs. So here, I'm just going to choose some images that I have pre-downloaded. So I'll just go into my downloads. 
or like my quick access and then we can actually go in here and see if we can detect some logos so here i have an image of uh, some logos here we basically just pass in our image we need to set up a threshold value so here it's, it is only able to predict forward here we can see the image dimension so these are uh it's a really low resolution image so this won't really be uh that good and then we can basically just tune the the, the confidence threshold here up live and then we can see we get some other different kind of predictions we can also have an overlap threshold value i'll try to know i'll try to actually pass in another image here that i also had um so basically we can pass in this one and here we can see we detect a bit more logos so now we also have burger king we have pepsi and then we have hardwood over here to the right again we can tune the threshold value here so now we also get some other different kind of uh, predictions so we actually like detect it is a logo but now it is not really confident that this is the correct logo uh, which is the case we set up a confidence score we can have olaf threshold again this is not the exact same dimensions that our image has been been trained on but again, these are just images taken like from uh, from Google, so you won't really get that good results if you just pass in a, uh, in an image from the actual like data set uh, or like close to the data set. So these images here is kind of like um, old images of different kind of like logos. But here we can see that we have all these different kind of logos, and then it is able to actually like detect those. You can both do like multi classes, so you can detect what kind of logos so you're basically doing like recognition of the logos but you can also just choose that you just want to train it on one class and then it is just detecting if there is a logo or not so this is really cool you can just upload new images if you want to do that and then we can basically just when we have uploaded new images we can go into the annotation tool and then we can basically just go in and do the annotation so here we're just going to open up an image where you can just take a new one here so I'm just going to find one with a logo. So we're just going to take this one here and then we're going to assign an image. Then we're actually creating this labeling job so we can go in and label our images. And then we have our unannotated images over here to the right. So let's just go into this one here and then we can actually go in and annotate it. We have the different kind of tools over here to the right. I'm going to create way more videos about RoboFlow, how we can do annotation on different kind of like task, instant segmentation, semantic segmentation and so on. But for this classification here or like this detection, we're just going to use the ordinary bounding box tool. We also have some label assistance so we can actually like generate labels automatically, which is really good if you're going to label like large data sets. We also have some smart polygons that I'm going to show you. But now we're just going to take the bounding box. Then we basically just draw a bounding box around our logo. And then we can actually like just um, annotate here with a label. So right now this will be uh, in B. And then we're just basically just going to pass that in. We can save it. And now it has acts like labeled this image. We can just directly go to the next image. We can then take all the logos here. So we basically just annotate. We just hit label for all the different logos. We need to find a class. So this could be, like, let's just call it club. And then we can just annotate all these images here with the club logo. And then basically we just label all our images. We go back and then we can just directly train our model. So now we'll have our data set. We can then just have our data set. We can go down and actually like generate it. So we can both do um, pre-processing of our data set. We can do augmentation. Then we can just directly generate our data set. And then when we have generated our data set, um, we can actually like just go in and deploy them after we have trained it. And again, I'm going to show you how we can do these different kind of things in other videos. So here we can see we just have some samples from the test set. We can either like drop in images or like video files or even like youtube urls and then we can do inference on this model then you can actually like see how we can deploy these models with either like for example like python and then also like javascript or swift or something else or if you want to do it on jetson uh, nvidia jetson they have like how we can act like set up the image for doing that inference or ios but here we're just going to have the hosted api with python so first of all you need to pip install roboflow we can set up the api key here so this is how you actually like get your project and your data set into uh, python uh, python and then you can use pytorch or tensorflow for actually like training a model or just doing inference and then you basically just call model.predict you just lo load in the version of your model then you pass in model.predict you pass in the image the confidence score the overlap and then you can basically just have your uh, model doing predictions then you will get the output you can either visualize your outputs or you can just print them but this is how you can do inference this is really easy you don't have to write like that much code you only have like a couple of lines of code that you need to pass into your function or like into your 
uh, into a program and project and then you're actually like going from having a data set train a model deploy a model within like half an hour or something like that depending on how large are your data set so this is pretty cool we can go into the universe find all these different kind of things um and get inspiration of projects how we can use different kind of like data sets uh, optic detection semantic segmentation so self-driving here is a pretty uh, popular industry we can go into that and see all these different kind of like data sets that we have in the universe uh here we can just see all these different kind of things so car damage cogo data set german traffic sign detection benchmark a crack so if we have a crack in uh, in the road so we will actually do instant segmentation to find cracks in the road so again these can be used for a lot of different kind of things you can merge the models and so on so this is really cool i'm going to create way more videos about that in the future so thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video and then i'll just see you in the next video guys bye for now